I've got a bit of a new setup, one that you can see back here and also one that you can't see right here. I have a new microphone. Let me know if it sounds better. I hope it sounds better because it's pretty and I want to keep it. What's up plums? How's it hanging? That's too dick jokes in one there for you because today we're talking about penises on this channel and not my penis this time thankfully just in general just a very general chat about some myths dick myths so i'm making this video because like from even way before i started looking into lower surgery and actually to be honest way before i started properly transitioning like right when i was in my baby trans phase i was hearing a lot of bad stuff about lower surgery and the results you got and just all of that kind of stuff. There was loads of information floating around that was quite frankly very scary and put me off. And it put me off because for quite a while I used to believe it. I used to think that the surgery results weren't great and that the surgical options weren't great and all of that stuff because that's just what I was getting told. But then I decided to pull my little head out of the sand and do some hard googling and I properly looked into lower surgery and what it was about and the options and stuff and realized that a lot of this stuff that I was hearing was either like one-off really really bad experiences or most of the time it was just myths just people making stuff up being scared themselves and spreading it online <laughs> so today I'm going to be going over the three top myths that I used to hear and actually still hear and I hear them more now that I've had lower surgery myself I get a lot of comments repeating these things back to me telling me they must be true about my own dick and yeah I'm just gonna basically be going over why they aren't true in a majority of cases. First myth is that it's useless and doesn't work. So many people claim or think that penises from lower surgery, metoidioplasty or phalloplasty, just don't work. That they're just useless and they're kind of just there. And I've had many comments about my own results. My personal favorite was when it was described as a useless dead flesh bag <laughs> and other variations multiple times by, I, I think just trolls making themselves feel better by saying those things about me which are very untrue. But I really do think that some people literally believe that you end up with some kind of just useless tube between your legs and that really isn't the case. Many people who have metoidioplasty can achieve natural erections and some people can achieve some form of penetration as well but there are also things which help with achieving penetration and with phalloplasty erectile devices can be fitted so you can achieve erections that way and you can use it during penetration as well. But it is, I mean it's not all about penetration, you, you can use your penis in other ways and it's still all good, you know. And then kind of away from sexual functioning, there's also just general functioning, you can have urethral lengthening which allows you to pee standing up, so you really can end up with a penis that functions in multiple ways and definitely isn't useless or a flesh bag. <laughs> Number two, you can't feel it. I feel like this is one of those scary ones and it's kind of related to the whole uselessness thing. Is uselessness a word? Uselessness? I don't know. It's kind of related to the first myth I think a lot of people believe that you can't feel anything and it's true that like immediately after surgery you will have some kind of sensation loss but in most cases this is just temporary and you will regain a majority of the sensation back both like just general tactile and also erotic sensation for phalloplasty I believe there needs to be a nerve hookup with your existing genitals in order to have erotic sensation but it's definitely something that's possible and I think sensation loss is very very scary and I think because there can be temporary temporary sensation loss right after surgery and you know depending on what procedure you get and the way you heal it can take a while to get the sensation back. It can be quite a scary thing and then some people might think it's permanent but in my experience I've never heard of it being completely permanent in terms of like complete sensation loss being totally permanent but the level that you get back can vary depending on the person. And finally number three the final myth not that it's really the final myth it's just the final myth of this video because I just wanted to cover like the really pressing ones I don't know. <laughs> Myth number three is that it doesn't actually look like a dick. Granted, there will be differences between a penis created during fallow or meta surgery and a cis penis, but they all look like dicks at the end of the day. With meta, the major difference is the size, but in my opinion, metoidioplasty results just look like a mini willy, like it, it looks like a dick, it's just smaller. And in phalloplasty, from what I've seen of results, the major difference looks like it's in coloration and like vein appearance, which can be added with medical tattooing once you're all healed. I'm not not denying that there aren't differences or that like really up close people won't be able to tell that there's something different about your
your penis, but it still looks like a penis. So yeah, that's the three myths that I wanted to cover today. I'm not trying to make lower surgery sound like all easy and wonderful and like you're gonna get like the perfect penis, like it's not perfect dicks all round. Stuff can go wrong, but for any of these myths to actually be true for a certain individual, things would need to go like majorly wrong. The most common outcome with things going a bit wrong is to have a revision. Some of these myths have come from who I assume to be just transphobic trolls on the internet who just do not want to believe that trans guys can have functional dicks that look like dicks. And some of them have come from within the trans community itself, just spreading of misinformation, and both can be a bit damaging, so I just wanted to have a chat about it, basically. So in conclusion, unless shit goes majorly wrong, then you will end up with something that functions very similarly to a dick and looks like a dick. I'm also not saying results are perfect, but they really do improve quality of life and sexual satisfaction as well. Lower surgery is not as big and scary and horrible and not up to date as it sounds. It's not for everybody and that is fine, you don't have to like the results, but there is definitely a lot of scary misinformation going around that I wanted to kind of put right in my own tiny little corner of trans information. If you have anything that you want to add to this video then let me know. If you have any questions then leave them below as well, I will do my best to answer them. I'm sorry that I I'm not the best person at answering questions. I try my best, but then stuff just gets in the way. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye!